Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Pokemon News. Blastoise's Mightiest Mark Raid does premiere Wednesday night, um, and it'll be lasting for about a week. So let's get ready for that raid with some prep. Blastoise is going to be a Steel Terra-type Pokemon, and it's going to have its hidden ability, Rain Dish, which is going to allow it to heal over the course of the battle as long as it's raining. It's going to have likely these moves for water attack. It's going to have water spout or hydro pump, both very strong moves. For steel, it's going to have flash cannon uh, to go with its terra typing. It'll likely have an ice move like blizzard or ice beam, and it can have the fighting move aura sphere. Blastoise itself doesn't have a lot of coverage moves, um, but there are some that are available. For instance, it does learn the psychic move Zen headbutt. Uh, which could be a pretty good uh, counter to fighting type Pokemon that are going to be uh, trying to defeat this raid. Um, it could also learn Ice Spinner, which could be used to uh, derail terrain uh, strategies. Support and setup moves that it'll likely have are Shell Smash, which is going to be very dangerous, Rain Dance, and Iron Defense. It could also run Haze or um, that other stat reset one. Um, those are possibles here. Most likely, though, we're going to be seeing a Shell Smash Rain Dance combination. I think that's what's going to happen, most likely. So let's get into some builds that could fight this Blastoise. The first one that I think would be pretty successful in this situation is Polyrath. Uh, Polyrath uh, will be uh, successful in this raid, mostly due to its Water Absorb ability. That's going to protect you from those big, powerful water attacks. Um, and it does have stab fighting. So if you tear it into fighting, its bell or drain punch moves are going to do a lot of damage. So for this Polyrath, we're going to give it Black Belt instead of Shell Bell, which is going to increase drain punch's damage even more. And we're going to hopefully be utilizing Belly Drum to get some really big max damage drain punches off. Uh, amnesia is to uh, increase its special defense, make sure that it is not too overwhelmed by its powerful attacks, and Haze can be used to reset Blastoise's stats. Another possibility for this raid is Annihilate with the Fighting Terra type. It would also use Black Belt and have the Defiant ability. Um, we'd want to max out its special defense so that it can take bulky uh, bulk those hits that it's going to be receiving from Blastoise, and it's going to want to have Sunny Day uh, to negate the potential rain that Blastoise is bringing, bulk up to power up its own stats, and Screech to lower its defenses. Um, Annihilate might not be the best here situationally, it depends on when they put the shield up for Blastoise, uh, so it depends on how quickly you can get those screeches off. If that doesn't work out, Coridon is a great replacement for this um, with a very similar move set. Just switch Coridon in, um, and it can do very well minus the screech. Give it a different move there. So in summary, likely, just like the Venusaur, there's going to be Herba Mystica as reward. So this is a great, another great raid to farm for Herba Mystica if we find a way to successfully beat it uh, every time. After Blastoise, Charizard will be next. It's going to be the exact same as before with the Dragon Terra type. And if you've caught it already, you cannot re-catch this Pokemon. After the Kanto starter raids that were thanks to Pokemon Day, most likely the next starter that will be available is Superior. And that's just based off the new pattern that they've set up post the Hisuian starters. Uh, the pattern, I believe, is Fire, Blaziken, Gen 3. Empoleon, Water, Gen 4, Superior, Grass, Gen 5. I believe that's how they're going to be going through for the next. Also, is this potentially a hint at what the Z-A starters are? Who knows? It's very possible, but that'd be kind of cool, right? Speaking of Z-A, let's do some hype and speculation. I think we're going to be doing this on every news video that we have until the game comes out. I do like to be hyped and speculate. Um, it's one of the favorite things that Pokemon fans do. I've already seen some really sick, fake Koro Koro spreads on the internet. Um, 
of people getting hyped for what's gonna come in this new game. So let's join in and have a little fun with it, right? So first of all, let's talk Megas. Um, Megas have been confirmed to return and it's everybody's wildest dreams that we get some new ones to fill in the roster for this game. Everybody is immediately pointed towards Flygon, the Pokemon everybody thinks has been wronged in the past for not receiving a Mega, but there are other Pokemon that could receive them as well. Dragonite is a likely uh, candidate there, considering Tyranitar and Metagross and Garchomp all got one. So why wouldn't uh, why wouldn't Dragonite? Um, the Gen 5... Um, well, basically most Gen 5 Pokemon didn't get Megas. The only one that did was Audino. So it's possible we'll see some Gen 5 Megas in this uh, remake uh, Legends game. And then is it possible that the original Kalo starters get Megas so they have their own um, uh, gimmick evolution to go with? It'd be really cool to see some Megas involving these three. Um, Chestnut could get... Uh, more heavily armored, maybe become a steel type. Uh, Delphox could really lean into the witch thing, be really cool. Uh, Greninja could go full ninja mode, maybe become uh, like a flying type or something like that. Lots of possible options there for our three starters. Next up, we're also wondering what are the starters going to be in Legends Arceus? We had three starters that were not originally from Sinnoh that we got to choose from in uh, Rowlet, Cyndaquil, and, um, Rowlet, Cyndaquil, and, wow, I'm really blanking here. Oh, and Oshawott. Um, so we're expecting that there will be three different region starters available in this game. Um, a lot of talk has been going around about what those could possibly be. This is what I think it's gonna be based on what I've seen on the internet. I think this is the most compelling um, argument. I think Snivy is a great grass starter here. Snivy evolves into Superior, and Superior is modeled after European nobility. I just think it would make sense then that they would it would give it like a new a new form for this, right? Because the third stage would be a new form. Um, it could become a dragon type. It could become um, like a fairy type for like regality. Lots of options with Snivy there. Torchic is a rooster when it fully evolves. That is a symbol of France, so that makes a lot of sense. A lot of people have discounted Torchic because it already has a mega form, um, but I don't think that's necessarily going to stop them. Um, Pokemon is going to do what it's going to do. So very possible that Torchic is going to be this starter. Um, it could get uh, like the electric typing, fire electric. Uh, it could, lots of different ways it could change. Piplup, the Napoleon penguin just makes sense. Lots of fun things you could make with a new, a new form of Napoleon. You could give it also the electric typing, make it water electric, have it like a sparkly trident face, um, other stuff like that. These are my three picks. Um, I've seen a lot of different Pokemon put in here for Torchic, but Snivy and Piplup seem to be the two most common choices for the starters of this new game. There's also bound to be some regional forms in this game. Um, and there's a lot of ones that have been kind of thrown around generally on the internet. Um, one of which would be Aromatisse becoming a Plague Doctor instead of a Perfume Flamenco Dancer. I think it would be interesting to see a new Synesty that is coffee-themed, maybe a little bit more Parisian. Uh, Duraludon might be a new form that is Eiffel Tower related. And there's some electricity there, so maybe like a Steel Electric or an Electric Dragon. Meowth could become a Musketeer, have a new Meowth regional form. And then I think Charcadet is a perfect Pokemon from the new game, Scarlet and Violet, to get a new regional evolution. Um, the Armor Rouge and Cerulege were all about like conquistadors and Spanish guards. Um, so you could potentially make a Charcadet evolution that is very French in that way. So lots of options here. And there's tons of other ideas I've already seen. And we'll cover more as we go through um, more Pokemon news videos in the future. Another big question people have been talking about with the Z minus A game is when will the game be set? Some people think it will be in the past, like the last Legends game. Um, me thinking that if it's going to be in the past, it'll be in like the 1800s in like more of an industrial era time. Uh, that is a re time frame in the past when Paris was actually redone. 
um, and the streets were made wider, and there was a lot of change happening in the city at that time. So that whole like city reconstruction theme that they've really set up um, could really feed into that time frame. Other people have said this is going to be the Lumio city of the future, and it's going to couple with Scarlet and Violet. Scarlet and Violet is a game that talks about the past and the future, and Legends Arceus was set in the deep past. So wouldn't it make sense then to bookend Scarlet and Violet with a Legends game that takes place in the far-flung future? That's a reasonable argument. I'm interested to see which way that goes. Um, there's not a lot of evidence in the trailer, but they also didn't give us a lot of evidence, period, in the trailer. So either way is a reasonable assumption. I'm interested to see where it goes. Finally, the Pokemon Company in America, I believe, revealed in a comment on one of the videos that the game will be taking place in Lumio City. And they made it made it sound like, like the game would only be taking place in the city. Um, so now that comes kind of the question, is this entire game only going to be happening in Lumio City? And how would that even work? Or is it going to be a lot like the Legends Arceus game, where Lumios is like the new Jubilee Village, and then you go out to different areas of Kalos, um, and catch Pokemon out in the wild like that. I think it would be a lot more difficult to do a game just entirely in an urban setting like that, but Pokemon has made, um, continues to make the assertion that they're trying to push the boundaries and do new things, and that would certainly be a new thing for an entire game just to take place in one city. Finally, the title indicates that there's going to be a new legendary and a legendary to accompany our X, Xerneas, our Y, Yevatal, and our Z, Zygarde. Zygarde is the order Pokemon and is based off of Nidhogg. It's the Norse serpent that wraps around Yggdrasil, the world tree. Um, you can kind of see him in this picture. He's wrapped down here in the bottom section, um, and he's a part of kind of like the Norse world order. So it's very possible that the new A legendary could be a Yggdrasil themed legendary um, because in the title, in the logo of the game, the Z and the A are kind of intertwined. So it would make sense then that Nidhogg would be intertwined with a Yggdrasil type Pokemon. Something to think about. It's something I've been thinking about. It's awesome. I'm very hyped for this game. Anyway, thanks so much for watching Pokemon News. Remember to subscribe so you can stay up to date on what's happening in the Pokemon world. And we'll be back with more news when it comes and, of course, more hype as it builds. Thanks again for watching. See you soon, trainers.